Hello everyone, it's Kay here and I'm back again with another sponsored project from Handy Hippo Crafts www.handyhippocrafts.co.uk and I am here to present another project using items provided in that wonderful tea package that I shared a couple of videos back. Now today I'm going to show you one of the easiest flip books I've actually ever encountered. It's on YouTube. I'm going to go back and try and find the name of the lady who put the original video forward and leave a link underneath this video. Basically all you need for the flip book is a 12 by 12 piece of card or strong paper which you then cut in half as I have here. So you're making one cut so you have then two pieces at a length of 6 by 12 which is easy peasy and then you put the longest side up to your scoreboard and you score at 5 and 3 quarters and six and a quarter on both sheets which I've done already as you can see. You then fold those score marks and burnish to give you a nice demarcation and that amounts to a half inch gusset for your flip book so you can actually really go to town and put lots and lots of things into your little flip book. I'm choosing to call mine really a gift book because I don't quite like the um, washi tape. It's not very good at anchoring things down so what I've, what I've done with mine is made pockets and little tuck spots and that kind of thing. You'll, you'll see when I get to it. But this forms the basis of your little flip book. And it really is as simple as that. Now what the lady said on the video was to overlap two pages into the center of each of the pages so you get a raw edge on this side which you can deal with in in decorating and you get another area on this side which is safe and allows you to um, decorate it quite freely without fear of it being caught when it's opened or put away and that page being damaged. However, what I've done on this side in my flip book is made a pocket. So I found what was the halfway mark, which is about, I don't know, from the score edge to the outside edge, you're probably looking at about two and three quarters. And I've put a mark here and what I'm planning to do is cut out a little half circle to give an aperture to reach into the pocket with. In making the pocket, all you have to do, if that's the way you'd like to go, is put some score tape along three sides of this back bit. But you must be careful and avoid your score lines because Anything that goes over the score line is going to affect that area that you've folded into. So having cut out your little bit at the back here, you then peel back any double-sided tape that you've chosen to use and you anchor. And the easiest way to do it actually is to do it the way I'm doing with, with the work stood up before you actually place it down on your surface and make sure that all that double-sided tape has anchored. So then you end up with one, two, three pages inside 
you have another page to, to decorate which folds in from the right. You have another page to decorate that comes in from the front and then at the back you've got a lovely little pocket that you can put something into by way of a gift. If you don't like the idea of a pocket at the back and you would prefer that the back of your flip book was extremely strong and very well structured, then there's absolutely nothing to stop you just gluing those two pages together and then you're left with five, sh five sides to decorate and this half inch gusset gives you lots and lots of room to put some very nice goodies in to send to the recipient. It's entirely up to you. As I say, I chose to do mine a little bit differently insofar as I wanted that packet pocket at the back. And here is the front of it. I'll bring the camera in a little bit. You can guess it, guess it. I've used the Sarah Davies 6x6 paper pad again because this lends itself so beautifully to this project with very little needing to be taken away once you start decorating the front of your little book or gift book. This is what I've still got left from this amazing paper pad. It just goes on and on and on. It really is delightful. I, I can't praise it highly enough. I have made this flip book using the American card stock that I was sent by Handy Hippo. This is the buff colour, the flesh toned colour, and it lends itself perfectly to the um, to, to bring out the best in the shabby chic papers. I've got a little ribbon bow that I tied here, a little bit of pearl trim, and then I just tied on this very, very pretty little butterfly just as a finisher to the overall papers. You really don't need any more than that. These papers speak volumes for themselves. You then open up the page here. I did a little bit of um, work with the tab board which I was also sent by Handy Hippo. This is the We Are Memory Keepers tab punch board but I think this deserves a video all of its very own and I will come back and do that probably tomorrow so you can see it and how it works. It's a lovely little gizmo and if you're into um, 12 by 12 sheets where you're scrapbooking this is the tool for you if you like to do daily planners and that kind of thing again it's invaluable so I'm going to put that aside I have as I say just used it once in this little journal just to find my way around it but it really does deserve um, a, a video of its very own and I will come back and do that so on the first page I've just decorated the page with the punch that I used previously. I have maximised my use. Excuse me one moment. Here it is of this punch because again it is a very very versatile punch. It's punched through the American cardstock and the designer papers beautifully. So I'll bring that one back into the mix and I'm all for showing people that actually you don't need to spend a fortune to make really, really pretty, pretty projects. What you need are things that you can utilise for lots and lots of different projects. So saving you a little bit of money and making life a whole lot easier for yourselves. If you think when you're buying to coordinate things, you know, punches, stamps, whatever, then it makes for you having the opportunity to put things like this together. As I say, I use the little tab bit here. It can be used as a tuck spot as I've not actually anchored that down in any way. I've used another punch here 
and it just sounds it says friends are friendship isn't the big things in life it's a million little things and I just think that's a very very true saying and very appropriate this is the back page the outer back page the folding and what I've put on this page is a belly band which I've put a little bit of lace on and it's married up beautifully with the papers underneath and I've made three little three by three cards again out of the American card stock. I've rounded corners, I've kept it really really simple because I don't think when you're putting something into a project like this you have a whole lot of room to do a, a, a great deal of embellishment if you want to put lots of little goodies into it. So these three cards are what will fit into the belly band and all I've done is just line them up like so. They fit into the page beautifully because it is essentially nearly a six inch page and then opened it up and put these into and underneath the belly band like so. I've not done envelopes for them, I will do that, but at the moment it's more about getting the idea across to you. I've just used some delicate little blooms, the Martha Stewart Branch Punch, which I've used in the same colours because the main thing here is the sentiment, which is give thanks, and what better day to give thanks than Mother's Day or a special celebration when you can be thankful to have people that you love around you and just enjoy the celebration. So that's that page. And then when you open it out, I've got another tag page here, but in actuality it is a pocket that you can then pop little goodies into. I've used slithers of the decorative papers, as you can see, just to make more of the pocket scenario. The little tag just gives you an area to hold on to there. Unforgettable Moments has been printed here because obviously the recipient could put in some photographs or whatever they wanted to. There is room enough in this little pocket to put a little notebook or some doodads, some little flat back pearls, some ribbon even, depending on what you wanted to do. The centre page here, I've just decorated three of the extra large, um, I'll take one out, well I'll take them all out, it doesn't make any difference, three of the extra large uh, paper clips, I've mounted them again using the American card stock and some little bits of lace trim that I had and some flat back pearls and a little bit of star trim here just to add to the overall prettiness. They then fit into another pocket here. It says using washi tape that can let go unfortunately after a little time and were the recipient to use these but want to keep the book there's obviously the opportunity for them to then use this as a little storage area for things that they might like to keep themselves. So they literally just pop in over the pocket. The papers behind aren't hidden, thankfully, and it does show them off to a very good vantage point. And for anyone that likes the shabby chic look, then adding some lace trim and some pretty bits like this just enhances the overall look of the gift. I'll just lift that up there like that. You'll notice that in the spines I've put something flexible. I've chosen to use a lace trim but I've, which I've only stuck down on one side because again the creasing that you do to make this flip over and sit tidily needs to be kept as free as you possibly can. So using something like this that's pliable and easily manoeuvred is a solution and gives it another point for decoration. 
So that's those pages. I've got lots and lots of room within the half inch gusset to add more if I wanted to. This then folds over which takes you then to the back page which because it is the back page needs to be relatively plain. So I've just kept more of the pretty, pretty, pretty paper free. I've decorated each of the sides like so to give that another bit of interest on the outside. And then in my little pocket I've made, if I can squidge it out, a little notebook. And again, I've used the papers, I've used the punch, I've got another of my little decorated uh, uh, little butterflies to decorate the tie off for the little journaling book or notebook, which I've just cut the papers to size and stitched in with some really strong, strong um, cotton. It really is really strong and I've doubled it to keep all the papers together so that then the recipient can use that in their handbag or indeed keep it within the pocket of the flip book to keep it as a keepsake. All in all, it's a very, very lo lovely project. And as I say, all your basic ingredients are the 12 by 12 cardstock at the very outset. Decoration then is only limited by what you have to hand and what you choose to do with what you have to hand. You know, there are no hard and fast rules in this crafty little business. You can do as you will once you've got your basics in, in place. I'm just very, very lucky to have this glorious paper pad, which I hope you'll go and check out on Handy Hippo, which once again is www handyhippo.co.uk and check out all the lovely things that you could use in a project like this and enjoy doing. They have at the moment got the brand new papers in from Graphic 45. I had to indulge myself because I just adore the Graphic 45 as well. So if you haven't seen that and you're a Graphic 45 fan, then do run along over to Handy Hippo, check it out and see what you can get for yourself on this lovely Mother's Day. Take care everyone. Thank you for sharing this time with me. Bye bye for now.